In a previous video, we saw how to use Hibernate with JPA in Spring to automatically create a table that matches our entities. We don't always have the luxury of being able to automatically create a table though. Sometimes we have to connect to a table that already exists. So we're going to update this now to simply validate the schema and we're also going to specify exactly where data should go within the table. So I've created a new table in phpMyAdmin and I've given it some column names and table names. So as you can see here, the table is called specimen, or specimens rather, with an S. And then we have specimen ID, plant ID, latitude, longitude, description, and plant name. Let's go into our project now, and in the application properties file, we're going to change this from create, which means essentially create the table each time. We'll change it to validate, which means don't change the table, just validate that it looks as it should. Now I'm going to choose save. Now I'm going to go to our specimen DTO, and let's look at this in high def. Let's add a few new annotations to this. We already have the entity annotation. Let's add the table annotation, and we'll say name equals and then specimens. So we're saying that we want to hook this up to the specimens database, and we'll do a little magic to import, just one moment, import table from Java X Persistence, that looks good. Now each of the columns we're going to need to annotate as well. It actually did a pretty good job of figuring out uh, what, what columns these should belong to, but nonetheless, we'll go ahead and say add column, give it a column annotation, and then we'll say name equals, and then we'll say specimen underscore ID for the specimen ID, and let's go ahead and take care of our end port as well. Okay, just like so. And now let's replicate this for each of the other columns. So add column, and then name equals latitude. That one's pretty easy again. Whoops, spelled correctly. And then add column, name equals longitude. Okay. Add column, name equals description. And a couple more to go, add column. Name equals plant ID. Remember just one or two of these and then we'll run back to the table and we'll see how these match up. Now we said we're gonna add one more temporary, kind of like a cached column. Uh, and so we're going to say add column and then we'll say name equals plant underscore name like so. And then we'll say private string plant name. And we'll give this a getter and setter. So right click and generate, which I always have a hard time finding, but we can also go to, uh, sorry, source. That's why I can't find it. Uh, source, generate getters and setters. Let's choose our plant name and let's put this after, let's not go after plant name, but let's go towards the very end after set plant ID and generate. There we go and save. Now let's go back and take a look at our endpoint. Uh, so our endpoint is in the plant places controller and we know we have kind of a dummy, uh, uh, save specimen endpoint that we're calling here. We'll go ahead and update this endpoint to set the plant name just to test out that column as well. So specimen DTO dot set plant name and plant 83 is our Eastern Redbud. You see, since we have it there now, we no longer need it in the description up here. So we can say maybe beautiful fall color or something like that. We'll say fall color, uh, beautiful fall color. We'll stick with what I said and save. Now, with it saved, let's go ahead and restart our application, and we will hit the Save Specimen Endpoint, and we'll make sure that this commits to our database. So right-click, make sure it's not running first. Uh, right-click, and we'll say Debug As, and then Java Application. Give it just a few moments to get started. And looks like it started. So I'll run back to our browser. And we said we're going to the save specimen endpoint, so we'll go ahead and hit refresh. And we have it in debug mode, which is great. So we can step over, watch it create the specimen DTO. We'll hit this relatively quickly. Now we're going to go into the save method. This is all things that we set up in a previous video. So specimen DAO save, specimen repository save. We'll tell it to go ahead and play. And now we go back and take a look at our table. And let's take a quick peek here. And we see after I refresh that sure enough, 
we have 83 beautiful fall color eastern red bud just as we hoped. Now I paused the video, ran it one more time, and we saw that it inserted another new record. Now it's the same data, so the next thing that we want to do, and what we're going to do in our next video, is we're going to remove the hard coding that we have in our controller, and we're going to go ahead and wire this up to our user interface. One quick consideration before we get to that next video though, do we still need this generated value annotation? It's probably not a bad idea in case we ever go back to at create, but let's find out what happens when we remove it. Because remember, in our table, in our MySQL table, we already have this set up to auto increment our specimen ID. So we have auto increment set up there. So we did that manually. Now to test things out, I will remove the generated ID and I'm also going to run back to the controller and just make a few subtle changes here. So instead of Eastern Red Bud, we'll call this one Red Oak. We'll say Quercus Rubra Red Oak. And we'll make just a couple of subtle changes. We'll make it 38 and 85 like so. And we'll say beautiful uh, leaf color. So just a few subtle changes so that we can watch what happens. Save and let's go ahead and restart our project. Make sure it's stopped. Oh, yep, it's easy to forget to stop it, but the problem is if you forget to stop it, then it's still consuming the same port. So restart as a Java application. Give it just a few moments here. And it looks like it started. And so we'll go back. We'll hit this endpoint one more time. That's going to kick the debugger again. And go ahead, switch. And we'll step over. So here's our red oak. Now we're going into the save method. And the question is, when I hit save here, is it going to know to automatically generate a new unique identifier and is everything going to work as expected? The first hit takes a little bit of overhead just because it has to set a few things up on the Hibernate side. So far, it looks pretty good. So we save, we continue, and we go back and we'll refresh our application and we'll see, do we have our red oak with beautiful leaf color? I simply run up and we'll say specimens and... Uh, we see beautiful leaf color, Quercus rubrum red oak, specimen ID sure enough did increment to six. So if you're hitting an existing table, you don't necessarily need to have that generated ID column or annotation. It will still figure it out provided that the table that you have set up in your database knows to auto, auto increment that primary key column. So that wraps up this video on the table and column annotations. There's several more annotations we can look at that we're going to explore in future videos. So I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you.